clearness is what you want. And whatever it is that is disturbing that clarity, this is something you need to find a solution for to, to handle or to adjust. And afterwards you have like different, depending on what type of emotion it is. Yeah? In the Buddhist practices, for example, you have sometimes meta meditation. Welcome back to The Everyday Stoic with myself, William Mulligan. Today I'm talking with Master Xu Ye about meta meditation, clear mindedness and how to make the best decisions. The information he shares in this talk has been so helpful to me already. I know it will help you, so I hope you enjoy. Today's episode was powered by Huel. Huel is a quick, affordable and nutritiously complete food with everything that your body needs. I hope you enjoy. People think it's about being emotionless and being this like cold robot that just gets on with their life, you know, to feel pain, don't care, um, don't care about relationships, they're just focused. Um, but it's completely wrong. Um, actually, it's about being compassionate, being kind, benevolent. Um, and I think people think being emotionless is manly and strong, but the Stoics like to think of your emotions as watching a river and you can observe your emotions going past and you can sort of detach away from them, but you still feel them. Um, do you think uh, being compassionate, being benevolent, being kind, do you think that is manly? So let's start like with like being emotionless. I think since many years, if you also like look at the, the videos that have been published from me, I think 99% of the time I have more or less the same face expression. When I have classes or wherever you see me normally, I used to have more or less a quiet, sometimes people say very serious, very strict, face expression. So the first thing is what you see on the outside. Well, but now I can tell you because, uh, because it's like my body, I can tell you that throughout all these years, it has never happened that more or less I am just emotionless walking through my days. This is not what's happening. So there is the clear distinction between how you look on the outside, what you are expressing maybe on the outside and what's going on on the inside. So just because you don't see something doesn't mean it's not existing. At the same time, just because you see something obviously like from the outside also doesn't mean it directly translates to what you are able to see on the inside. You know, it's like especially coming from an Asian culture, Sometimes you notice this is where the sentences come from. Like face to face, it's like we can smile with each other, but inside I can have a very different feeling about when I smile. Yeah. So smiling doesn't necessarily mean it's friendly or that I am happy. So outside appearance and internal state are already like two different things. And at the same time, just observing my internal world or my emotional world is even coming now from the Buddhist tradition. It's not about being emotionless. It's, it's actually, it's impossible to be emotionless. The only question is how much impact and how much influence ultimately when you regard your life and also the decisions that you are taking during this lifetime. If you could say that these are really good decisions that I've been taken in my life, and these are some decisions that I wished afterwards I would have taken other ones, I do think that there might be a correlation between decisions that are being taken clear-minded and decisions that are being taken maybe because of uh, some overwhelming or whatever emotional colored state. And the picture that we use, for example, in the Buddhist traditions is just like this, this glass of water. Yeah. So also referring to we are getting born just like this clear glass of water. And in the moment where now it's nice, uh, I just take this one for a moment. Yeah. So if I put right now the glass on top of this, 
and you just watch down, it's absolutely no problem for you to still read what is standing beneath it, right? Yeah. There is like, there is no irritation, there is no, um, there's no disturbance of the image itself. So, but it only is possible to see it like this, meaning through the lenses of your eyes. This is like the lenses of the eyes, because it's clear. And now as a picture speaking, whenever any type of emotion comes up, regardless, it's not just like the emotions that people regard as negative, okay? It's even um, a lot of happiness, okay? Even happiness is something that is starting to change the consistency or the state of this water, meaning the color can be, can be uh, the water can be colored or sometimes there can be dirt inside and you shake it a little bit. So something about this clearness is changing. And in the moment when that emotional state is, is dominating and then you watch down, it doesn't necessarily mean you cannot, hundred, you cannot read anymore what's written there, but it still is tinted. Yeah. It still has somehow now a color to it, okay? And the only suggestion is, let's say like this, that the best decisions, I think, also come when there is no disturbance between what you see and how it is. Because then your, your decision taking is like a hundred percent based on what you would call reality. And all other states, boiling water, frozen water, dirty water, colored water, all of these things are just irritations. So, and this is where, as a, as a model of understanding, if I look into myself and ask myself in the, in the past years, in the past months, so how was it? Then I definitely can, can see it also that there might, that it, it changes the way of how you look at the world and therefore also changes the possibilities of the solutions and then also the decisions that you are ultimately taken. So, and, and that's the bottom line. So it's important for me to understand why someone is propagating the state or, or the, the neglection of emotions. Okay, so this is like the bottom line. So when it comes to taking decisions, I think clearness is what you want. And whatever it is that is disturbing that clarity, this is something you need to find a solution for to, to handle or to adjust. A quick word for our sponsor, Huel. Huel is a quick, affordable, nutritiously complete food with everything that your body needs. This talk with Master Shuheng Ye was in Germany and we had to travel all the way to Germany. The whole travel, the whole journey was powered by Huel. We took Huel with us and it just meant that we was getting everything our body needed and we wasn't driving into all these fast food places um, to get a quick refuel. We just stuck with what we already have and it's healthy, tasty and nutritiously complete. Enjoy the rest of the talk. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people um, try to just eliminate these emotions because it's easier to just get rid of them than to actually face them or not get rid of them, they're just suppressing them and it'll be making their water dirty in some way, internally. Um, how would you clear that water? Number one is you need to be able to realize about yourself that it's dirty. Yeah, which means you need that self-reflection to actually see yourself in which state you are. And that, and, and that difference is when you are co completely identifying yourself with this and you are 100% identifying yourself. It's like, it's like when I feel, when I'm feeling hungry, when I'm feeling hungry, for example, that it's like, I feel hungry, I have to eat. So there is that direct translation to you feel and then you directly do. Yeah. 
because you think this is like you. But to be able, let's say, to see yourself in a way, also like verbally speaking, okay, my body just gave me the signal, he's hungry. So just by the wording, you have like another, you, you already have another perspective actually about yourself. So my body tells me I am hungry, but I cannot just stand up right now because this podcast is running. Yeah. So that means because of this uh, overview now, you start to have different, different possibilities. Okay, so that that first necessity is that you don't directly identify with what is going on inside of you. Okay, so this is the one to to see it. And afterwards, you have like different depending on what type of emotion it is. Yeah, in the Buddhist practices, for example, you have sometimes um, metta meditation. So it is like um, meditating upon a certain quality, meditating upon a certain, a certain quality, for example, compassion, for example, mercy, for example, healing. Okay, so very nicely, and this is what, what I told you before, why I like to also look into other traditions for example, in the Tibetan tradition of Buddhism, like you have so many different Buddha figures that are all symbolizing something different. Yeah. Yeah. For example, symbolizing, like I just said before, compassion or healing, okay, something like this. If you expand this now even more and you go into the Chinese culture, you will realize that for example, in Taiwan, because this is where I saw it and where it came to my mind uh, again very clearly, I think every 300 meters, you actually have like a shrine or you have a temple right located inside the, the main roads, the main shopping roads, like in the center of the city. So they're all temples everywhere. Each temple having one shrine or having one altar with more or less one or sometimes yeah, with one main person that this temple is dedicated to. And sometimes it can be that it is the goddess of the oceans. Okay, this is now probably not Buddhism, but it is like Chinese culture. Nevertheless, there is a statue which is named as the goddess of the oceans. For what is she responsible? For what was she initiated? For example, for all the folks before that had, uh, that had fisher jobs, so that went out fishing. And sometimes you had good years, sometimes you had bad years, sometimes you had bad weather, sometimes you have good weather yeah. in order to do the fishing. And in the way how I understand it is, whatever you think is missing in your life, why is it missing in your life? is because you don't feel it. If you would feel you're abundant, if you would feel you're satisfied, if you feel you're satisfied, you would not look for satisfaction. If you feel you're rich, you would not look in order to become rich. So the reason why we continuously look for something is because we don't have it. And what now, going to the shrines, going to the temple, can help you with is that it gives you the space. It gives you the space to contemplate upon the quality that this goddess or that this God is representing. And so that means if it is the Buddha of compassion, the people go in front and all thoughts about being in front of this statue is based upon compassionate topics, let's call it like this. So whenever you see this statue, it actually supports you in calling up inside of yourself the feeling of compassion. So what you're actually doing is that you are using a symbolism 
you are using maybe the trust or yeah, or or the energy of such a place in order to actually nourish yourself with the quality of what this statue is representing. And that means you're bringing what is missing in your life actually into your life. And that type of understanding, I think, makes a lot of sense. Why contemplating on different areas makes uh, is just a very helpful method. If you have any questions about this topic, leave a comment. I'll give my best answer or I'll shoot a question over to Master Sheng Ye to see if he can answer your questions. Um, hopefully that's helpful. If you're in the States or in Canada, my book, The Everyday Stoic, Simple Rules for a Good Life is now available for pre-order. You can get that in the link below. And in the UK, it is still available. Don't worry for people in other countries, it will be available soon. I'll keep you updated for socials, so stick around so you don't miss out. Guys, I've been getting a lot of questions about the posters behind me. They are the Memento Mori calendars. Um, I use one, it's really changed my life. I'm guessing if you're here on my channel, you already know what Memento Mori is. But for those of you that may have come in from a different place, um, Memento Mori is the reminder of your own mortality. That's something the Stoics did to help fill their life with um, presence, urgency to live, uh, gratitude. And it's something that has really helped improve my life, which is not thing, it seems like an oxymoron, but no, it has helped a lot. So the idea of these is every square is a week of your life. And when you fill it out, you fill out another week of your life, um, which sounds odd, but I can't explain to you um, how much it can change your life. So um, that's what that is behind me. It's not just some obscure design. And if any of you are interested in any Huel products, which I personally recommend, I love Huel products, they're very tasty and I know I'm getting everything I need. Use code EverydayStoke10 for discounts. The link will be in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day.